Welcome to Uncomfortable Conversations About Culture and Christianity. My name is Eric, and today I'm joined by Rachel. Hey, y'all. And Alex. Hey, hey, hey. And that's it. That's all of us. The gang's all here, I guess. <laughs> right? Uh, no. Uh, it's This is a new thing, right? We're, uh, we're, we're doing what everybody else is doing. We're working from home. We're on the internet and we're recording a podcast so how do you guys feel about this new format are you are you enjoying your new location <laughs> it's nice but it's definitely more complicated trying to figure all this stuff out so yeah um, yeah it's nice it's nice for me uh hanging out in my basement if, if a kid pokes through my little uh <laughs> curtain back there <laughs> Just welcome. Welcome to my life. Welcome to working from home. And it could be a lot of fun. So this this could be interesting. This could be like that uh, BBC interview. Have you guys seen that? Where the kids come into the yes. interview while he's... Yeah, <laughs> so good. Uh, yeah, all right. So uh, we're, gonna, we're, we're doing a few things different besides just this remote uh, recording of it. We're also uh, accepting voicemails now. Uh, so if... You know, if you want to call and leave us a voicemail, we would love for you to do that, and we will play it uh, on air. And uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna give it out real quick because just if you're listening and you want to call in, it's four zero two four one three five six three eight. I was gonna look up like what the what the what the letters could make spell out from that. Maybe there's something <laughs> really funny, but I didn't. I didn't. Next week, next week, we got it. Yeah, I'm. I'm uh, hoping it's like Bacon Man or something like that. Um, <laughs> or we could give out a prize for whoever just comes up with the most creative, you know, words for us. And so you guys work on that that are listening. Do it. And the prize will just be congratulations. You did the best one. Yeah. Uh, and they can leave a voicemail and we'll we'll put it on here, which is what everybody's longing to be on is the Uncovered yeah, Podcast. I mean, it's a it's a big hit, I hear. Uh, and if you want your, you know. 10 to 30 seconds of fame you could call in and be on air uh speaking of which we we did get a few calls we put this out uh we got a few voicemails already so i think we're gonna kind of spread these out over this episode the first one comes in from a familiar voice uh let's take a listen to that now hi guys it's Mackenzie. i hope you haven't forgotten about me yet and i sure hope that people noticed that i was missing um, my question for you guys is, every time we have a guest on, we ask them three questions right at the beginning, and I realized I've never heard you guys answer those three questions. So if you guys could please answer those three questions, all three of you, that would be awesome. Thank you. <laughs> all right. Thank you, Mackenzie. Uh, Mackenzie, we miss you. Uh-huh. Aww. Mm. So I guess she got voted off the island. Oh wait, that's not the show she was into. She didn't receive the rose. Is that a better? Didn't reference? receive the rose. Yes, <laughs> she will be okay. so excited that the Bachelor finally made it <laughs> uh, on the show. Uh, I mean, I guess a quick explanation. I mean, if you have become familiar with Mackenzie's voice on this podcast, uh, I mean, she's go- going to be graduating from the residency program in, I think, May. Is that right? Something like that. Yeah. And, yeah. End of April is the end of ceremony. April. Yep. So, uh, so her plans were to kind of move on from this podcast anyways at that point and because we all got decentralized uh because of the current virus situation we are in uh yeah she decided to go ahead and just step down now from the podcast mm-hmm. so uh, we do miss mckenzie it was good to he- hear her call no we didn't forget about you never mm-hmm. never will we forget you're one of the voyagers that started this so thank you <laughs> Uh, yes, thanks for coming along. Uh, but we do have to answer the three questions, I guess. Um, that should be fun. Who wants to go first? Ladies first. <laughs> okay. Uh, there. Or- <laughs> uh, what's the first question? Uh, if you, did you ever have a nickname? I think that's the first one. And if so, what is it? Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, well, in high school, my soccer team um, called me Aslan because mm. my hair was so fluffy, and when I was running around um, playing soccer, they just thought I looked like Aslan, apparently. So, yeah. Right. So that was my nickname. <laughs> that one's easy. Are we going to go around then with the nick- the first question, or are we going to do all three in a row each? We can go. Let's go around. I don't know which way we go around since we're not in a circle or s- <laughs> table anymore. So, well, I'll go. I guess I'm in the middle of this okay. in the framing. So, if you want me to go next, I can do that. And then, let's uh, do it. Um, my nickname. Well, <clears throat> my sister. When I was real little, I was probably like second or third grade. She would do this thing. Her name was Lisa, and she would do this thing where she pretend to be an alien, or that her bo- she'd been abducted by an alien to try to freak me out and say yeah. her name was seal which is lisa backwards and uh would say you know i'm not lisa i'm not your sister i'm an alien whatever and it kind of freaked me out and then eventually i started to play along and then my name backwards is kyer uh and so that was kind of became this weird nickname for a little while um <laughs> the only other one more like my wife when we were dating and stuff she would always call me sunny i don't know that kind of stuck for a while but that's really the only nickname Aww. I have. So yeah, that is, is cute. So sweet. I'm, I am so glad other people do like uh, backwards names because literally almost every night I tell my son a story, and his name is Britton and it's Notturb spelled backwards, <laughs> and so I just make up stories that like happen from his day that are from Notturb, and so it's like an inside joke. So that makes me feel good. Yeah, that's that I'm awesome. Not a totally weird dad, but my nickname. Uh, it's just mainly been, I mean, in sports, it was just my last name, which is Ely. Uh, but my whole life, I've been going by a nickname, uh, which is Alex. Okay. So my middle name is Alexander. First name is Philip. There you all have it. Not a lot of people know that about me, but if you're going to write me a check, <laughs> write it to mm. Philip with one L. Uh, but my dad is also Philip. And so uh, just since I was born, they've always called me Alex. I'm not a junior, though. People always ask that. And thank goodness, um, because my dad's middle name is Ferris. And uh, uh-huh. so if if that trend continued and I went by my middle name, my name would be Ferris. And I don't know a lot about Ferris, Ferris Bueller's Day Off, things like that. People mm-hmm. always make references or Ferris Wheel. <laughs> but I just feel like um, my life would be different uh, if my name was Ferris. So you, I'll stop you, there. You'd get a lot of Bueller's. Like, I think that would yeah. be kind of... <laughs> All right, the second question is, if you had a warning label, what would it be? Uh, that's for McKinsey. I, I feel tr- like trapped right now because I don't I didn't really think ahead of this at all. So um, anyways. It is hard. Ahead. Yeah, it's harder than, than I thought for people. <laughs> I feel bad for all of our guests now. <laughs> okay, well, I'll go first. Um, I think mine is probably like, you will know everything she's thinking just by looking at her face. <laughs> Or something like that. Like, I, mm-hmm. no matter what, even if I'm trying to cover up how I'm feeling or thinking, you'll see it on my face and it's pretty obvious. So, that would be my warning label. So, all right. <laughs> there we have it. Uh, my, I feel like mine would be like warning you're going to think he's angry, but he's not. Uh, like, I, <laughs> I, I, I get, so like, I spent like most of my life growing up, I, was always like i would kind of deflect my own like i don't know insecurities with humor and try to make people laugh so i just kind of became the funny guy for people like oh eric's the funny guy like haha like do a joke make a joke or you know dance for us whatever (laughs) and so then like further in my life like when serious things i'm trying to convey to people like i think i started to take on this very like stern sounding voice when i would get really impassionate about something and now i think people just like why are you so upset like just settle down why are you so angry and i'm and i think it's just like this weird uh mechanism i have developed over the years so if when i sound angry i'm probably not nearly as angry as i sound so sorry yeah i remember when (laughs) i remember when you were angry last week in a meeting uh so oh yeah but now i I know you weren't angry so that's people got really mad (laughs) Yeah, I was I was yelling and throwing things. <laughs> Everyone else just normal, and Eric's just angry. No, not really. <laughs> Mine is probably the exact opposite of Rachel's. I have like a terrible, <laughs> terrible resting face, um, and so it's just bad. If you've watched the podcast at all, you probably already know this. Like, you can't know anything that's happening inside of my head <laughs> by looking at my face, and so 
and it's really caused uh like i've actually learned i've kind of joked about it but i've learned more and more that i need to lead uh better with that and and get have a better resting face but also i can't (laughs) totally change that it's just kind of how things fall, you know, uh, but to let people in on that first, because there's been a lot of people that think I've hated them or like <laughs> all of that. Like if I'm watching a sermon or if I'm giving a sermon, like I'm the guy you don't want to look at because I would be thinking this guy hates it, but literally I'm just internally <laughs> processing it and that kind of stuff. And so I've, I've learned to maybe lead some conversations with that. So during this, it might look like I'm extremely bored and mm. I hate everything you're saying, and I hate everything that they're saying. If you're watching us, it's probably not the case. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Third question. Uh, what's the most recent book you've read, I think, is the question. Mm. Um, this morning, I was reading this book, Pris- Priscilla Shire, uh, Discerning the Voice of God. So I just mm. started going through that i'm really excited i feel like this is a good time where it's a lot more uh quiet and things aren't as busy and so i really want to start i don't know stepping into more of a time where i can try and discern god's voice better and and hear from him more so i'm really excited about it it's awesome uh yeah i brought props is that okay (laughs) um so the most recent book I finished is actually a comic book. So that's Nerd Alert. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's Batman, <laughs> Last Night on Earth. Anyways, it was all right. No, 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 no. It's, it's kind of good. Uh, and then, so I'm really, like, we, we had a whole episode on, like, faith deconstruction and stuff. And that, that, that whole perspective really fascinates me on as far as, like, how Christians are handling that and, like, in a world where, you know, Christians are already kind of misunderstood, I think, a lot of times by just the general secular public and um uh so i i've there's a the, michael gungor was one that people were talking a lot about uh and yeah. so i was reading his book called this uh i did not get very far into it i've been kind of struggling because it's kind of bananas uh and so and then the other person who is fairly famous for this this is a book called comedy sex god and it's by pete holmes also kind of the same thing like these guys I, I, I'm trying to just wrap my head like I want to ha- like build some empathy just to like understand like wh- what their perspective is but it's yeah it's kind of super hard to do that um because mm. of it's just a little bit out there a lot of like um I don't know what you would want to call it but kind of uh spiritualism and stuff like that so anyways that's kind of where my nose has been lately that's awesome Awesome. Yeah, the latest book I have read or am reading right now is called Irresistible Faith. Uh, reading it with my journey group. Uh, it's by a guy named Scott Sauls. And so uh, he was kind of an understudy for Tim Keller. So I know there's people that go crazy when they hear the words Tim Keller. And they're like, mm-hmm. oh, my gosh, it's like right under Jesus, <laughs> you know, for modern day people. And so wow. that'll perk up a lot of people's ears when they're like, Tim Keller, really? <laughs> and so anyway, uh, but it's been a great book. Our journey group has been uh, heading through it. And it's been a lot of good stuff for me on identity and um and the whole premise is what would it look like for us to have live out a faith that's irresistible to people watching, which I think even now in these moments, uh, it's been a really good reminder. And so love it. Mm. Awesome. All right. Well, that, that brings us to the end of the three questions. Uh, that took up some time. I mean, we all had a, a lot to say. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> the other, the, the next portion of this episode that we want to get into is we decided that it might be fun since you know we're already on this track of sharing a little bit about ourselves over the next few weeks to maybe share um i mean we've talked a lot about the pandemic like that's been two episodes now we're all aware of it we're all living it right now so we figured let's not necessarily dwell on that uh for every episode but uh for the next few weeks we're going to kind of tell a little bit of our backgrounds a little bit of our personal stories and in the i guess in the vein of ladies first as alex mentioned earlier uh (laughs) this is rachel's week to go so uh if you know without any further ado rachel if you'd like to dive into a little bit of your story and we can maybe interject with some questions as you go yeah that sounds good and like before i get started i just kind of wanted to share a little bit about just 
sharing your life story. I think it's really um, an important thing that we can do with people around us, especially in um, college and young adult life. I feel like I was learning a lot about when I meet new people, like the first time that we meet and get together, I just ask them about their story. And I, and I share my story because I feel like that just helps you get on another level with a person, um, just right off the bat and you can understand them a lot better. And so hopefully maybe even through this, people can, um, learn how to share their own stories, um, so that they can share with people around them, um, that they're getting to know. But anyways, so Love it. that's great advice. Yeah. Really good advice. So um, I will start. I was born in Dallas, Texas. Um, People couldn't tell I'm from the South. So, um, and I grew up in a Christian home. Uh, My dad was actually in full-time ministry um, for the first 12 years of my life. Um, I was homeschooled and I had a younger brother and younger sister. Um, So that just gives you kind of a general understanding of my family culture and kind of um, where we were at. Um, when my sister was five, um, she actually got diagnosed with cancer. Mm. Um, she had a brain tumor and that like was one of those, you know, first big kind of shifts in, in my life where, um, just a lot impacted me and, and changed me. And, um, just like my first experience with like anxiety and understanding death and really thinking about those things, um, I just like would wake up in the middle of the night like panicking thinking that something was going to happen to her or my family um and I like wouldn't even go spend the night at friend's house because I just didn't want to be away um from my family um because of that situation but anyways that changed not only me but like my whole family situation as well um my dad was just um getting kind of frustrated in the the ministry um world um he was really struggling um with that and um, it was kind of a hard thing for me to see as a kid because, you know, his work life and personal life and faith life was all mixed up together. And I was seeing all these negative things come out of the church. Um, and so that was just like a weird season for me to kind of figure out like, wait, I thought the church was supposed to be good, but it's like causing all these negative things in my family and like to my dad and all that kind of stuff. Um, so that was just like a weird, confusing time of my life. Um, but, you know, we still went to church on Sundays, all that good stuff. And really, it was like a family faith um, for us. Um, when, uh, I actually went to public high school. So I d- was homeschooled up until high school. And then in high school, I started um, public school. Um, and that was um, fine. I didn't, like, go crazy and, like, rebel or anything like that. Um, I don't think I was weird. Hopefully other people didn't think I was weird because I was homeschooled, but, um, yeah. And, but I just wasn't really like living out my faith a ton. I was just kind of doing the family thing, not really, um, like devoting a lot of my time to faith, but just saying I was a Christian kind of thing. Um, high school was actually really rough for me. Um, it was my first experience with relationships with deeper relationships with peers. Um, but they were like, horrible relationships like people were just you know in high school gossiping um like just horrible um not really good intentional relationships and so I was like ready to be done with college I mean high school um by my senior year I had basically like lost all my friends that I had um and I was just kind of like getting through senior year ready for college Um, then I went to college and my freshman year was like a typical, um, freshman year college kind of went a little cray cray, um, just kind of got out of the house, got out of high school, um, was on my own and able to just kind of have a little freedom. And I was still a Christian and, you know, like reading my Bible throughout the week and, um, but I didn't have that community of believers around me um, that I needed. And the people that were around me were not good influences. And so eventually by the end of my freshman year of college, uh, or yeah, um, I basically had a um, come to Jesus moment. And there was just a situation that happened. And um, I kind of came to this point where I was like, okay, I can keep going down this path and it's going to end in some really bad things. 
Um, or I can try and figure out this faith thing in a different way than I've been doing it um, in in high school and now because I wasn't really, you know, giving my faith my all or really trying to make it my own. And so that is when I kind of made a decision um, to just basically kind of erase everything that I knew about faith or everything that I was doing um, and try to start fresh on my own kind of faith journey. And so I went on a 40-day backpacking trip in Wyoming, <laughs> which was just kind of like my way of like, okay, we're like we're going out in the wilderness. We can't talk to anybody. Like it's just going to be me and God. And I was actually um, with 12 other strangers who decided to go on this um, backpacking trip. And so it was a discipleship training, um, like outdoor training, mission training thing. And so I was out there for 40 days and literally just like felt like I kind of rebuilt my faith from the ground up, which was like so awesome for me. Um, But then, you know, you come back and it's kind of like, okay, now like, what do I do? Like I've I've rebuilt my faith, but I'm back and I don't have any friends that are, you know, help like going to help me along in this journey or whatever. Um, And then... I realized that I actually did have friends that were um, followers of Christ, but they were they didn't like push it down my throat like I was expecting people to because that's kind of what I grew up with. Um, and they were like really fun and like like I was like, okay, Christians can't be fun. Like, there's no way that they're Christians. Blah blah blah. And then Amen. they actually in what? <laughs> Amen. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and so, and then they actually invited me to this ministry called um, Campus Crusade. And um, I got involved in that, and that was kind of just like the starting point for my, um, just like realizing what, like I could, like what faith truly was and what like a relationship with God really looked like. Um, and just intentional relationships too. Like that was the first time I ever had intentional relationships who actually cared about me and my heart and what I, you know, was going through. And so that was really awesome. Um, over that time, I really actually um, got a heart for like women and um, relationship and community with women because in high school I had such a negative experience with that. I was like, okay. I want to help any freshman girls that are coming in who probably have had the same experience that I've had, like learn what, like you can actually have like awesome relationships with other women who's not going to be gossiping or, you know, doing all these things, but they're actually going to be encouraging you and, and helping you grow in Christ. And so I really took on a big role in our college ministry of like leading the women, which was my first experience of kind of ministry. And um, I also told myself I was never going to do ministry because of my dad's experience with ministry, which is um, funny now, but um, yeah, I feel like God was really working in my heart to show me what ministry looked like um, before I kind of stepped into other uh, ministry paths. Um, Yeah, and then I got a teaching degree when I was in college um, and um, taught for a couple years. And actually, so when I was a junior in college, um, I met my husband, Eric, and he was a freshman in college, so I just waited a little bit for him to grow up, and then um, we started dating, and so um, that was awesome that we got to meet through a college ministry. Um, yeah, and so, yeah, I taught for a couple years, but after teaching for a couple year- years, I really felt like God was pulling me back into ministry. I think I was kind of resisting it a little bit. Um, I just have seen the pain that comes from working in ministry and um that was really hard growing up and so I really resisted me stepping into it because I just didn't want it to hurt my my personal faith um but then I heard about the residency at CCC and I was like you know what that's a great opportunity to step into it and try it out um but not actually have to fully commit to it um and and see kind of what it's like and so Clearly, this past couple of years have been really awesome for me, and just I feel like I'm exactly where God um, wanted me to be, and um, yeah, so now I'm doing the kids' ministry, and I'm just like loving it, and I um, think God's really protecting my heart in this and just helping me. Um, he kind of helped guide me every step of the way before I was here, and it's just cool to look back at my story and see how He used that to prepare me for where I am right now, so 
yeah, that's awesome. kind of yeah, thanks my for story. Sharing. Short and sweet, and I'm sure there's a million other things that I could share, but yeah. <laughs> so, so when you mentioned your sister, I, and I maybe I missed this detail, but you did no, she? No, I think you didn't miss it. Okay, I was curious too. Did she? Did she pass away at five? Is that what you okay, said? Okay, no, no. And I always. <laughs> okay. I always leave this out. I don't okay. know why. Um. So she um got through chemo and radiation, everything, and the cancer was um gone, and she's been cancer free since then. She's twenty two now. Oh, wow, um, awesome. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I always leave that out. I don't know why. And people are like, wait, what happened? Yeah, like, yeah. it was a cliffhanger. You And I was like, yeah. I don't want to interrupt, but I'm so curious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah okay. so yeah, she's cancer-free now, which is really awesome. And um, it was yeah. definitely a huge um, miracle that that mm-hmm. happened. And so she had a, her brain surgery was like 12 hours. Mm-hmm. Um, it yeah. was just like crazy. So yeah, that huge miracle. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks for sharing. Alex, did you have any other questions? Or did you feel no, like that, you? Yeah, that was the question. That was like, oh, okay. <laughs> back to this. You didn't think about anything else. Yeah. You were just waiting. Just so <laughs> doubt. Like, what happened to her sister? Mm-hmm. Uh, I so. mean, I kind of wanted some more details about like what the crazy college experience cray, cray. was. Yeah. Yeah, I know. The cray, cray. I, just... I mean, you kind of veiled that answer a little bit, but it's okay. <sighs> I know. I, I'm not sure how much I should share on the <laughs> podcast, but if people want to know, they can ask me for sure okay. in person. I'm, I'm not ashamed to share. Just email but. podcast at cccomaha.org. <laughs> yeah. Oh. yeah. <laughs> All right. Awesome. Well, thanks for taking Thank the time you. to do that. I think it was really good yeah. uh, to hear people kind of let people in a little bit. Uh, mm. should, we, should we go for another voicemail? Let's do it. Let's go for another voicemail. All right. Here we go. Hey guys, this is Ian, um, big fan of the pod. Um, I am, you know, it's early. I'm putting together a big nutritious breakfast. Um, but it made me think, what are your most controversial opinions over food? Um, I'm expecting full out brawl and like, um, there should be blood. I want, I want your hot takes about food. All right. Thank you. All right. Uh, that was Ian. Uh, you know, he wants our hot takes about food. He he also wants violence, I guess. Uh, wow. <clears throat> he, wa- he wants us to be so impassionate over That's our scary. virtual <laughs> violence. Uh, I mean, I'll start it off. I, I'm kind of an anti-mayonnaise person. Uh, so I know that can people can get pretty upset about that. Uh, especially, like, I think mayonnaise on a hamburger is the most repulsive thing I've ever heard of. <laughs> like, I don't know why you would do that. Uh, I will, like, go for, like, a certain aiolis and stuff like that that have some flavor to it. But just, like, straight up mayo on a sandwich just does not... No. I mean, so we're supposed huh. to fight. Does everyone... Is everyone against me on this or for Well, it? do you use mayonnaise on anything? Like, is it okay on anything or nothing? I... The only, the only way I use it is in, like, if it's an ingredient in something like if you're making a dressing or an aioli or something like that i'll i'll use it then but if you can't disguise it with other stuff like no no mayo please (laughs) that's what makes me like uh a whopper over a big mac and not not just that because i don't like that extra piece of bread in the middle (laughs) but um the whopper has mayo on it uh, i used to work at sonic i was a i was a car hop at sonic uh I, sorry to reveal some of my story right now. Uh, spoiler um, but uh they have those are the options you know it's mm-hmm. you can get a number one with mayo or a number two with mustard you know so uh, um i was used to saying that but yeah i like mayo like i would prefer mayo over probably ketchup on a on a hamburger not on a oh, hot dog wow. that's nasty yeah that's super nasty to put mayo on a hot dog I guess there are just um, so many more creative condiments that i feel yeah. like people could enjoy than mayo it's just this boring white paste i don't i don't know just not my thing and like you have to do it the right way i mean you you know when you go to like a fast food restaurant and you bite into your burger and it's just like globs of mayonnaise just like oh my gosh that is just not okay yeah uh, yeah, I, I, as an adult, I've, I've behaved much better when I've gotten things that had mayo on it, and I just kind of tried to scrape a little off and then just eat it or whatever and not make a big deal. But I, like, I remember being like a, a kid and like literally like asking to send things back because it had mayo on it. It was, uh, anyways, uh, anybody, all right, what I shared, any, what, what, what food thing are you, you know, want to fight about? Um, 
Well, this is something that even, like, my husband does not like that I do. I like to eat, like, leftover dinner for breakfast. <laughs> oh, I think I think pizza or leftover, unless well, you have breakfast for dinner or but it's pizza, not like those are the only pizza. things that are excused. It's, yeah, it's like a leftover steak or like leftover hmm. like cheeseburger or are, you know just. Are you really cold? cold? Oh yeah, that's a good question. Warmed up or cold? I've I've done cold cheeseburgers before. <laughs> okay. Not not. I like I could see a steak or something if you're like reconstituting it into a breakfast burrito no, or steak yeah. and eggs yeah. or something like that. But I don't I don't know if I'm okay with this. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that's pretty disgusting, right? <laughs> I know, I know. I'm gonna have to take I, Eric's I, side and virtual punch you yeah. over it. I would never do that okay. in real life, but just to give Ian what he's looking for. Right? Yeah, so, yeah, I that's do that. Right. Disgusting. I'm gonna have to incorporate some sound effects or something now that we're just yeah. kind of off the rails <laughs> yeah. over here in internet land. Yeah. Uh, all right, Alex, what's your food thing? Uh, yeah, my food thing is probably, uh, and I don't know. I feel like almost snobby talking about this because like it's just been a pattern for me over over the last year but is that we eat way too much food and I I think most people would agree with that but like the American culture three meals a day is basically like a social construct versus like what we actually need and so last year Mm -hmm. I had a friend talk to me about all the benefits of fasting so even when Rachel's talking about like eating breakfast I'm like I haven't done that for like a long time like literally over a year and so wow what a snob so I, yeah <laughs> it's, it's it's hard to not like yeah so i do one meal a day and so it's hard for me to not like judge people that uh, that are eating like three huge meals a day like more than what i'm having and like i'm a you know i'm mm-hmm. six four you know and so i'm a, a large human i'm probably above average at least and so i need calories and stuff like that and i'm definitely not starving myself by any means but Mm. uh it's it's uh it's learning to like i I guess the harder part is that's like a lifestyle choice i've decided to make and it's that had physical and and spiritual and emotional benefits all all of that but also uh it's hard when you like you're going to lunch with someone and you it makes it awkward for them when you're just like sipping a diet coke and you have a lunch meeting and so uh it's, it's, that is like a little a awkward i've been there with actual you. food thing but i don't know yeah you've been there when i've mm-hmm. done that oh no i think i lost rachel's audio that's no rachel good. oh no what'd you do rachel broke. i silenced her because i didn't Did want to s- give me any no you, I she was gonna give you feedback on that and uh now she's gone uh i don't know what happened there rachel but if you need to maybe do- jump off the call and get back in to fix it that might help um yeah I, I i would agree with you i think that's not probably like a really hard uh like thing to maintain for people though especially if nothing else the social like impact of it is it's like just the norm Hey, Rachel, you made it back. The internet failed us, but you, you came back. It's okay. Uh, we, we do, you know, that's enough about food. We have one more voicemail. Let's listen to that one. Uh, this one's from Sonia. Hi, it's Sonia Safidi. I want to talk about what people are doing in the waiting. And I want to, I want to hear about the silver linings, the, the miracles and the mess, because they're there every day. In that uncomfortable place where God has us, where are we seeing his miracles hmm. um, in this mess? Thanks. Mm. Miracles in the mess. Uh, it, yeah, miracles in the mess, the silver linings. Uh, I think I think we're all trying to find that <laughs> little sparkle of hope because everything has been uprooted and changed and is different, and we're all you know kind of have that lump in our throat. Uh, thanks for sending that or leaving that voicemail, Sonia. Um, I'll let I'll let one of you take it away. What do you any any miracles you're seeing in this mess or <laughs> I at least love that. silver lining? <laughs> I'll go first uh, since we've kind of forced Rachel every time, okay. uh, and, it, and it's given me more time to think when everyone else. That's why I like to go last. But yeah, I think for me, um, a couple of them. Yeah. One is uh, in my own personal journey group that I'm a part of. Um, it forced us to go on 
you know, uh, a zoom call and kind of break up all of our plans. And so we ended up doing, uh, guys only girls only, uh, zoom calls uh last week last time we met and it was it was good i don't think that the guys the the women of our group have been doing things like that having prayer nights and all that kind of stuff as just the women and really been doing well there but the the guys we've uh sometimes those social barriers are just harder for us to cross uh to feel comfortable as men and so uh, for our group it kind of forced us into that rhythm because 16 people on a zoom call was going to be too much. So we're like, let's try it. And it was probably honestly the best uh, conversation that I've had with all of those guys. Uh, we were able to get mm. pretty real and authentic about some things and, uh, and, uh, even share personally, like things that, uh, really fill our tanks and things that really drain us. And so even since then, some of the dialogue that we've had together, uh, has been, uh, has been really good. And we've been asking each other things, uh, you know, on individual levels that fill us and, and those kind of things. And so it's one of those that I hope continues on after this. And I, I think maybe I even shared that a little bit last week, but that's been a, a great, uh, a, a great thing in the middle of that. And just my family time, and so uh, it's afforded just more time with my family. Today I got to go just ride uh, uh, and include my kids and kind of my workout and ride with them over lunch. And so that was an awesome thing to get to do that typically in a normal work day, normal life, uh, I wouldn't have been able to have those kind of moments with my kids to create those memories. And, uh, and all of the things that we would do typically for entertainment, go ride the Ferris wheel at Shields or kind of all our go-tos, maybe a movie or, or things like that. It's kind of forced their brains to be more creative about how we interact as a family. And, uh, you know, my son likes to say, I'm bored, you know? <laughs> and so, uh, my wife's always like, no, you're not bored. You're boring. You need to think. And, and how do you Ouch. become more creative <laughs> That hurts uh, a little bit. in the middle of those things? Yeah. So, uh, those are some, some great things for us that are, are not uh, like super deeply spiritual, but it's been some fun silver linings, at least personally for me and in my family life. I, I The only thing, I, I mean, I feel like we're all going to kind of be repeating ourselves a little bit maybe because I'm, I think the innovation that I'm seeing all around us is kind of what excites me. That's kind of the silver lining I've been seeing. I think the way the church has innovated, the way um, you're seeing other businesses have to change out of necessity. Uh, and I, I think for me, I want to, I want to look to the future and see like what the long-term effect of that is. Like, it's going to be really interesting to see, uh, yeah. how, what the, what stuff sticks, like what stuff is going to continue to be different, um, even after this pandemic is over. Um, and maybe how it's in some ways, it's just forced us to into these really uncomfortable positions, but m- I think we're going to see a lot of growth out of it. I think, you know, I think culture as a whole is probably going to change a little bit anyways when this is over and um, for better or for worse, I think some of that stuff is if nothing else, it's interesting, but it's also can be exciting as we see these things innovate. Rachel, what about you? Yeah. I mean, I think a big thing I kind of talked about earlier is just like, it's quiet. It's a lot quieter and just um, less busy. And I just feel like I just love that um, being able to just, I feel more calm right now mm-hmm. and I just feel like there's less going on and I'm I'm not always trying to hurry and get to something or get to the next thing or rush the next thing. It's just this, this new sense of peace that I've been feeling, which has been really awesome. Um, and then also just um, going outside a lot has been a huge thing that I feel like I probably wouldn't have done as much if, you know, it wasn't like, oh, we're quarantined, we're inside. Like, Mm. you know, you just kind of want to get outside and be in nature. And so um, we've been going outside a lot, which is so nice that it's at least pretty weather out during this whole thing. Um, But yeah, that's been a huge, um, just silver lining is just being outside and enjoying nature and um, not just being so stuck up inside and watching TV or doing electronic stuff or what other things like that. Um, And then finally, I would just say... um, (laughs) Sorry, did someone sneeze back there? (laughs) That was my husband. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) Eric. Almost made it through the whole thing. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Uh. Anyways. um, (laughs) Yeah. So this is just great because people are getting a look into our our home lives. Anyways. yeah, so those are some big things that I feel like, and I'm sure there's plenty more that are just going to be coming as we, you know, are working through this situation. So, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, 
It's a unique moment, I think, for the church to continue to rise up and continue to thrive. I think we hear scriptures like, uh, hey, that the gates of hell aren't going to stop the church. Jesus is building it. But then I think it's hard for us to believe that sometimes. And, mm-hmm. and we've actually seen the church become more fruitful. We've seen more people show up and participating in our services. We've lost mm-hmm. some of that control that I think we like to have of mm-hmm. being able to count heads and count numbers or knowing whose uh, rear is in a seat every week. And so we're relying more mm-hmm. deeply on our faith to put together a sermon and trust that God is using it. I, I think mm-hmm. back to our church, even how uh, way back in the day, R. R. Brown, our founding pastor, did these radio sermons and people thought that was crazy and, and wild that he would put his voice over the radio and and now we have a similar kind of thing happening here. We don't really get to see faces and how mm-hmm. are people responding and, and all that. But then I got to hear from my journey group leaders the other night, like 10 of them and pray together and hear uh, how they're shepherding one another. And it's not really about the staff. It can become easy to be like a staff heavy church and think yeah. we have to do everything. And so it's forced us to lean into and God has given us some amazing leaders at this church that are shepherding people well, that are parenting yeah. their kids well, that are yeah. uh, creative, and they don't need us to w- hold their hands through everything, mm-hmm. and uh, and things aren't falling apart. And so I've been super encouraged <laughs> to see that in just our own church and, and the church history we've had at CCC, and uh, excited to see what God does through this. So, Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Well, uh, thanks, guys, for getting this figured out. All the techno- technological hurdles we've jumped over <laughs> to uh, form this podcast, but it's been fun. I think uh, even even this innovation here is going to be exciting to see where this leads us. Um, mm-hmm. Thanks for everybody who sent in a voicemail. That's really it's really great to hear everyone's voices in this time where we're yeah. disconnected. I think that's going to continue to be a fun thing to do i'm gonna put that phone number out there one more time for you if you're listening and you decide you want to leave us a voicemail for next week it's 402-413-5638 that's 402-413-5638 uh go ahead and call us leave us a voicemail for a topic or something that you want to talk about next week um other than that i think we're gonna say goodbye to everyone uh if you want to reach out to us you can do that on social media at ccc omaha uh or you can send us an email to podcast at cccomaha.org we'd love to hear your stories your questions uh feedback anything like that um until next time uh we'll talk to you all later